VIP Kid, GoGo -Go Kid, and iTutor Group, they all accepted the International Open Academy TESOL. <laughs> Hey everybody, so I'm back for a live and I'm actually talking about one of the most commonly asked questions that I get about teaching online and that question is what are the requirements? Now I do have the requirements listed for different companies that I work for on my website and I also made an FAQ page so that you can see it in a very organized way that if you just want to look at one school particularly, you can just click on that school's name and then it'll bring you right to that piece of information. Because I know it can be very overwhelming when you're starting out teaching online or you're just kind of trying to figure everything out. So the FAQ page is the best place to go, which I've linked it in the description of this live. Or if you're watching the replay on YouTube, it'll be in the description box there. So. What are the general requirements for teaching online? Now this really varies based on the company and each company will have a few different things, but generally speaking, the majority of the companies do want you to have a bachelor's, but there are some new companies and some other old companies that they don't necessarily need you to have a bachelor's. So, um, and those schools would be Palfish and then OutSchool, which don't require a degree, at least not right now. But I know, I think Palfish is on a hiring freeze, and then OutSchool is actually actively recruiting. And I talked about OutSchool before on my last live, and if you didn't catch that one, it was from last week, or sorry, two weeks ago, because last week I didn't go live. But um, so go check that out in the last live or just go to my FAQ page. But coming up, I will be doing a series on OutSchool. I've just been waiting to um, create that series because I went through the application process and then I haven't taught my first lesson there yet. So I really want to teach my first class there before I go and give information about it. I just want to have that experience first and then I'll put the, the series out there once I do that. So, generally speaking, the requirements are that you need a bachelor's for most schools, and then you also, if you're going to do ESL, you need to have a TESOL, T-E-S-O-L, or a TEFL. And people always ask me, related to that, well, what if I have my ESL certification from my state? The thing is that most companies that are based in China, it's a law to have either the TESOL or TEFL. So the only exception to that is if you have a degree in TESOL. They did not accept my state's certif certificate for ESL because it's an endorsement on my certificate. It's not an actual certificate with a number and they want you to have like a, an identification number on your certificate. So that's why they did not accept my state ESL endorsement because it doesn't have that ID number. And even though, and I explained this to the company that I work for, I said, but I took university classes for this and it just doesn't make sense. So I was a little bit frustrated at the time. But that being said, the TESOL isn't really that hard to get. And if you just want to have that piece of paper it, you can just get the $19 one and then and then some people are like, they'll ask me, they'll be like, well, $19, that seems really cheap. Do they actually accept that? And yes, they do accept that. I, I have that specific one, the International Open Academy, on my on the three companies that I work for in China, VIP Kid, GoGo -Go Kid, and iTutor Group, they all accepted the International Open Academy TESOL. And I, um, the reason why it's so cheap is because it is uh, an affiliate link. And so basically it's like a discount for you because I'm an affiliate. So the actual price is over $100. So you're getting it for like 80% off. So that's why it's that cheap. It's really as a benefit to you um, and like a thank you to you for using my affiliate. So don't be like, oh my God, that's so cheap. It must not be legit. No, it actually is legit. <laughs> Um, but if you wanted to get the TEFL, I also have an affiliate link for a TEFL 
they're essentially the same thing. It's just that one is teaching English speakers of other languages and the other one is like teaching English as a foreign language. But, like the differences aren't really that it's, it's just, an, I think the title is different more than anything. And one is for teaching people abroad versus the other is like teaching people in an English speaking country, but really they accept them both when you teach online. So don't really fret too much over that part of it. Okay, now the other things that you need when you teach online are obviously a computer, now I have, there are some online schools that have a harder test to pass for your computer. If your computer is older, it might not pass the IT test. So you want to make sure that you have an up-to-date computer and not every company accepts Chromebooks. There are some companies that accept Chromebooks, but these are all the little details that you have to kind of look through at each individual company. <laughs> and you'll find that out when you start to apply or when you look at their website. I do have the general information for the three or four companies that I am re recommending people to, but if you don't see like a detail like that, you're gonna wanna go to the company's website and research a little bit more there. And then the other thing you're gonna need related to tech is a headset and I do have a list of headsets on my FAQ page as well it's linked to my Amazon shop but for me personally when I started I just went to Target and got the Logitech basic headset for $25 and because at that time I was like well I don't know how long I'm gonna be doing this I don't know if I'm gonna pass the test or the sorry the interview so I was kind of like, let me just get these. I'll start with these. And I think even for my interview, I don't even think I bought the headset. I bought it after I passed the interview. So I totally understand if you're like, I don't want to spend that money right away. So you might just want to get like uh, the cheaper version of or the cheaper headset that works for you. But in the long run, you're going to want to get a headset that lasts for a while because I know some people replace their headset like every six months or every year. And the new headset that I got was the Jabra Evolve headset. The thing that I really, really like about that is that they're comfortable. And if I'm wearing them for several hours, I don't have that feeling like my ears want to fall off. I know some people, they'll teach like six hours or sometimes even more in a row. So that comfort can be really important when you're teaching online. And then the other thing you want to make sure is that they're noise canceling. So there's all those different things you want to think about related to a headset. But again, I have recommendations in my FAQ, um, on my FAQ page. And then I've even done like a whole YouTube video about the headset. So if you're watching this on Facebook, it's youtube.com slash Nikki Lubing, and then you can just search through the videos and you'll see um, my headset review if you want to go dig into that a little bit further. So we talked about having a bachelor's. Some schools require it, or most schools require it. There's a couple that don't. You do need the T-Cell or TEFL. You'll need a computer. You'll need a headset. What else do you need? Number five is Good internet speed, high speed internet is like a must when you're teaching online because that, um, the video, having to have that connection with video can really make your computer lag. So, or it might make your internet speed, um, like the bandwidth might not be high enough or there's all these different things that you have to think about. But people are like, oh no, I don't want to invest in that too. Actually, getting an upgrade for your internet speed is pretty cheap. So just call your internet service provider if your speed is not fast enough. And then you want to go to speedtest.net. You could do that right now or after watching this video, speedtest.net, and see how fast your speed is. Now for me, I like to have my um, download speed, I think, at a minimum of like 15 Mbps and um, maybe even 20, and then my upload speed, like a minimum of 15. I really um, start to notice my connection will break up a lot if it's lower than that. So 
I perf I have the highest internet speed plan. It's like one gigabyte or something. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it was one or one thousand, I forgot. But it's like the highest possible plan. It beats out AT&T. Um, it's at Xfinity. That's who I have, like Comcast Xfinity. That's who I go through. Not saying that they're good because I have had issues with them. <laughs> but honestly, between the two plans, because it's pretty much a monopoly when it comes to in an internet service providers, um, Comcast has the fastest one. Uh, their customer service, not good at all. But like I said, we don't have many choices. It's the two choices and that's the one that's better. All right, so aside from those five things, the other aspects that you want to think about would be your teacher background. Now, this is not my teacher background. This is just where I do my Facebook Lives or I record for my courses. So I have like a beginner's course for online ESL teachers and then I'm creating an advanced one that's launching in July. So if you're interested in that, you can grab my guidebook um, at NikkiLubin.com. You can just click Get Started Now, but I can link that in um, the description area as well if you want to be on my email list to get more updates. But anyway, so you want to have a teacher background, and I just did a blog post about that as well, um, having your classroom set up. But I just have a map, like a cute map, that is colorful. And then I put the logo of the school that I work for in there. It is a requirement for my school. I tutor group requires us to have the logo in the background. And so that's another thing you're going to want to think about. Now, without school, where I just got started, they don't really say much about the teacher background. So like I said before, it all depends on the school you're working for. But if you choose online ESL companies in China, typically they want you to have a cute educational background uh, for your teaching virtual classroom. And then I also think it's really important to have props if you're teaching kids. So be prepared for that for your interviews if you haven't interviewed yet. And props would just be like stuffed animals, puppets, star wands, whiteboard, dry erase markers, maybe even a little toy microphone. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You might want to use like a realia to help them understand the vocabulary you're teaching. So those are just kind of like the extra things once you get hired or even for your interview. Those are things that you're going to want to think about. And then long term, if you're in this for the long haul, you're eventually going to want to think about a desk and a chair. <laughs> because when I first started, I was teaching from my dresser and I was in a second bedroom. I had a little setup. You can find this video on YouTube as well. It was my VIP kid classroom setup video. It's one of my most viewed videos on YouTube. Um, and I just had like my, my dresser and this little mini table and I would go between sitting and standing. So for the mini table, I would have my chair this way and then I would turn around if I wanted to stand up and I would move my, my laptop. It was kind of, a mess, like a hot mess, but you know what? When you're first getting started, you just go anywhere in your house that will work for you. And I know some people, they teach from a bathroom. They teach from a closet. They teach right on their living room floor from their couch. So there's all different kinds of set setups because nobody expected to work from home. And now I can only imagine with quarantine, <laughs> Teaching during quarantine has got to be even more of a hot mess, especially if your kids are at home all day. So just long term, those are some things you want to think about finding a, a space for yourself because, you know, nobody really wants to work in a closet, but sometimes that's all people can manage just depending on what your house is like or your apartment is like, the space that you live in. I am very lucky to have a second bedroom that I changed into an office and I was able to get a standing desk that goes up and down with a comfortable chair and all of that. So if that's something, if that's the point where you're at, then you can also check that out on my Amazon shop or my latest blog post. So I'll link everything um, to this in the description because for now, right now I only have the FAQ linked, but 
that is everything you guys so just a quick recap i know i kind of recapped in the middle but you want to have most companies will require a bachelor's degree but not all for esl you're going to want the t-cell or the tefl you're going to need high internet speed a good computer and a headset and then those extra things would have you want to think about your teacher background and then the office supplies whether it's a desk or a chair etc so we got through it everybody <laughs> the requirements for teaching online and I hope that you guys all had um, have a good weekend. And then I'm just gonna throw one extra thing in here that came to my mind. I have people from around the world reaching out to me about this. And most of the companies that I recommend do require you to be from the US or Canada, but there are exceptions to that. So there are some companies that hire non-native speakers such as iTutor Group and Palfish. And then for out school, they hire people from the UK, the US, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. So that's another thing. But this is like the thing, you guys, because there's so many different opportunities right now for teaching online, you want to research. Yes, I am a great resource for you, but I don't know every single school. So some places that you can go to that have people from around the world. I think the best Facebook group to look into if you're somebody that might have a unique situation where you're either from um, another country or um, you are you don't have a bachelor's degree, I would go to the group Hired Online ESL Teachers with for Job Reviews, I think that's the name of it. There's over 20,000 teachers in there and they all ask questions like this and you'll see you can go to the search and you can see what people are saying about different companies so highly recommend that group if you feel like you don't fit a certain um everybody's you know we're all different so you might not fit into a certain company and if that's the case that group might have something to offer for you um so definitely go check that group out all right I did it. Finished everything related to job requirements. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.